What's up, what's up, what's up everyone? It is Jason Janet and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm gonna kind of get the process going on what it would be like if I was to restart my career, restart my business, and start everything today. This is another video installment in the overall series that I mentioned in one of my earlier videos last week where I said, hey, would it be cool to release content helping those aspiring to have entertainment entities or companies in the future with all the things that I've understood, learned, and been through establishing my career and also the SCE event group. So this is another installment video in this overall scheme of things. And what I want to do today is share really, really important information. And today's video is all focused on 10 foundational things that you need to consider if you are planning on starting your own company. I'm gonna to try to boil things down and get really into the points. Later on, if you find that this was useful, I might be able to do additional videos drilling down at a granular level to each of the things that I'm gonna share with you. Now, these are not in any particular order, but they're 10 things that I think you need to think about before you run off and start your own company. I am a really, really big fan of working for another entity before you start your own business for a lot of different reasons. As a matter of fact, I made a video about it, and if you haven't yet seen it, I'm gonna invite you to check the link right up over here and dial in and check out that video. I'm also gonna post it at the end of this video just for reference and there will be a link in the description field down below. Now, if you are someone that is dead set in having a company and establishing a business in the private event space, there's a lot of things to think about. This video is gonna address the top 10 things that I think you need to think about before you run off, invest money, and time and energy starting your business. If you think about this stuff up front and you can kind of get through all of this, I think you are literally stacking the deck in your favor to be successful in your endeavor. The purpose of me sharing this stuff is so that you don't fall flat and miss opportunities, spending time, energy, money, and everything that you weren't prepared for. So I want to keep it real, keep it honest, and share with you some really, really important things that you need to think about before you start your business. The conversation today starts with your business name. It's a big part of the overall experience. It's how you're going to be recognized in the future. And it's something that you're going to spend a lot of time within and associated with moving forward. Think about your business name. Think about where you are. And if I can give you a tip how I would go about doing it, I would think about where my plans are in the future. What are my goals? Where are my aspirations? What am I striving to create? And what do I want it to look like? Part of this equation from day one. I think a great way to go about it is to spend a lot of time online searching under different names, searching under relative terms, and of course, doing your homework to make sure that you are not taking a name that for another entity that already exists. The next part of this overall naming conversation goes to your overall brand and your logo. And I think this is a really, really important part of the overall business. And businesses do evolve logos over time. I can tell you that the current SCE event group logo has been intact now for over 10 years, and I am very, very happy with it. It's simple, it makes sense, and it's something that can apply to a universe of events and it aligns with our overall vibe, vision, and everything. It is important that if you do not have a graphic design degree and you're not someone that is really, really talented with overall graphics and design, that you engage the help of others. I think hiring a designer is the way to go. And there are many different avenues that you can actually use to come up with a really, really cool logo representing your brand, whatever that will be. I think some of the coolest stuff outside of maybe the cost effective universe of Fiverr is to run a logo contest where you actually describe the colors, maybe some things that you like and your overall goals of your business and allow people that do this professionally full time to come up with and to compete for your business. I think logo contests in general are really, really, really cool. And I'm gonna link a couple of examples of some places that you can go to in the description field down below. Another part of this overall business equation, talking about names, logos, and all the things from a entity perspective is how you are gonna be registering your business. And it's important to register your business. Are you gonna be a sole proprietor? Are you gonna be a limited liability corporation? Are you gonna be a partnership of some sort? All of this stuff matters because it will impact your bottom line in the future, especially as you grow your business. If you are someone that has no plans of having employees or growing wider, just doing your own thing, 
then your decision in this area might go to one to one specific entity. If you do have dreams of bringing on additional resources to help you fulfill your dreams and to, to work on this project, then you're gonna go a different direction. I would recommend speaking to an accountant and specifically an accountant that understands the event industry. I think it will help you for the long run and they might be able to share with you some of the points, pros and cons for each entity. This also will save you time, energy, and money in the future should you decide that you wanna switch from a sole proprietor to an LLC as you grow your business or whatever. Number two, we need to talk about gear. Now, gear is one of those things which is an ultra personal decision, but I think some of the manufacturers like Pioneer, and I'm a huge fan of Pioneer, have come up with some really, 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 really powerful tools that encompass not only the players, but the mixers all in one. You're gonna to need to think about how you're gonna be playing music when you're at your event, what speakers are you gonna use, which microphones are you gonna use, and all the other associated or relative components to operating a system. Are you gonna be using a DJ booth, DJ furniture? Are you gonna be using a facade of some kind? All of this stuff needs to make sense. And to expand on to the next thing, you need to think about transportation. How are you gonna get from point A to point B? Do you have a vehicle that can accommodate the equipment that you either own or you are going to need in order to offer or deliver the services for your company that you are planning on starting? This is part of the overall equation. Make sure that you have plenty of space to transport the gear or you have the ability of renting vehicles if need be. Everyone has a different philosophy. Everyone has a different plan. I wanna share with you the vehicle that I use each and every day when I work, and you can check out a video about my new van right up over here if you wanna check it out. Next up, you're gonna need music, the most important part of what we do, and if you're a DJ that's just starting out, this can be an overwhelming thing to kind of build at, and it will take some time. Now, if I was to start things all over, today, I would suggest investing into a music platform like promo only so you have all of the clean radio edits for what is being released on radio today. I would also consider some pools like Direct Music Service, DJ City with the overall beat source application so you have access to a broad assortment of content which will give you kind of the foundation to build your crates in the beginning and then you can collect music or hoard music from there. I think another tool that I want to talk about is Crate Hackers. It's a tool that I've now supported for a number of years, and we use it all the time here at SCE to do a number of different things like build crates, get ideas, and stay dialed into what other people are doing because that's important. Crate Hackers is a place where you just can't sign up for it, but I do have a link in the description field down below. So if you want to get access to this really, really dope music organization system and to be part of their overall community, check the link in the description field underneath this video and you'll get some Jedi VIP access to that platform. To continue the conversation and get to our next point, you're gonna need to have some software to operate your overall music system. Everyone that supports this channel probably knows I am a huge supporter of Serato. Serato is a platform that I have now used since it was a beta project and digital DJing is really, really big now. There's a lot of different options, and I'm not gonna say one is bigger or better than the other, but Serato is what I prefer. There's a lot of reasons why, and you're gonna need to think about the software that you're gonna be using at your events. If you are just getting started, I would recommend checking out a number of different software platforms and use what you feel is best. If you're working for another company, you might adopt what they are doing, or, Given your experiences, you might move off of the platform that they're using and move on to something that fits the style of play that you actually embrace and all the things that you aspire to create in the future. Next up, you're gonna to need to pick a lane and figure out what kind of DJ do you want to be? Are you gonna be a jack of all trades? Are you gonna focus on mitzvahs, sweet 16s, proms, child events, bubble parties, trivia nights, weddings, nightlife, or whatever. It doesn't really matter, but I think if you really, really want to grow in this business, eventually you're gonna have to pick a path. You're gonna need to pick a lane, and you're gonna need to develop your skills and your resources 
to provide the best service in that lane. Now, there's a lot of DJs that do a lot of different things, and that is okay, especially in the beginning. You're not going to want to say no to a lot of things because you want to get your name out there and exposure working for different people. But as you start to grow your business, you are going to have to pick a place that you want to spend your time and what you most enjoy, what you're very good at and what is abundantly available in your area are all things that you need to consider in this. I think the earlier you have a goal in terms of where you want to go with your business, the easier it will be to climb towards that goal as you start to progress in time in the future. So think about the overall vibe, the overall vision of your company and where you want to focus. That's this tip right here. Because we're talking about business, I want to jump right into the next point and that is you are going to need some kind of CRM. You're going to need a tool to help operate your business, whether it be organizing sales contacts, client information, music resources, contract scheduling, equipment, and more. Many, many, many CRMs exist today. I am a big, big, big fan of the DJ Event Planner platform. We've been on it here at SCE since the beginning of time within our universe, and it has progressed, it has evolved, and it has become a very, very important piece of our overall foundation of how we operate the business. DJ Event Planner allows you to schedule, it allows you to organize, it allows you to contract, invoice, accept payments, and do so, so, so many things. From reporting to the operations and logistics of your business, DJ Event Planner, I can say, is probably the most valuable business tool that we use each and every day at all levels of the SE Event Group and with my business. Without it, it would cost me a ton of time energy and money with additional resource salaries to do all the things that this platform can do. So you need to pick a CRM, one that you're comfortable with, one that has the ability to accommodate your business as you grow and scale in the future. And DJ Event Planner is the one that I selected a long time ago and still to this day am incredibly happy with. Talking about resources brings me to my next point. Outside of the operations of your business, you might want to lean on either friends and relationships that you have within your local industry and throughout the country, getting dialed into different universes of groups. We're talking a little bit about community, I think this is a big part of success and it's something that always, always treated us well at SCE and myself well as an independent DJ working in this overall industry. Community is a big deal. And I think getting associated with different local associations or larger associations within the DJ or entertainment industry is really, really, really helpful in a lot of different ways. I think building relationships is paramount into becoming successful in this business for a lot of reasons. Outside of the local DJ associations, platforms like Joe Bunn's DJs fall are a great way to align with other business owners seeking knowledge and improvement. And Joe has done a great, great job of really documenting his experience as a business owner for over 30 years and sharing valuable resources and lessons so that people can succeed in this quest of establishing a DJ business. Joe Bunn's DJ's Ball is not open universally for everyone, but I've lined up with Joe and I have an exclusive access link in the description field down below. If you are interested in becoming part of his DJ Ball community and getting access to his learning information, you can sign up right in this video's description and you can jump in and start learning and building a valuable community that you can lean on in a lot of different ways. Information, again, is in the description field down below. I wanna bring it old school for the next thing because we're talking about business and I think it is super important, even though we talked about your name and your logo in the very first point of this video, I think it's important for every DJ to have some kind of business card ready and available when they're out and about in their daily life, as well as when they are on site at their events. Having this information is critical and it's super, super, super important. Now there's a lot of entities that you can use to get business cards. I would just say, keep it clean, keep it classy and keep your information easily available 
on hand everywhere you go. Whether you go get coffee in the morning or you're rocking someone's party, having your business cards on you is really, really important. And yes, I'm saying that in 2022 when the world is all digital. Having business cards almost legitimizes you in some respects and it allows people to reach back out to you, whether they get to your website, whether they get to your phone number, or whether they get to your email. Make sure that you are setting it up. And real quick, I wanna give you a side kind of tip on email just because we're talking about it. Don't use AOL. Don't use Gmail, don't use Yahoo, don't use Hotmail. Register your own website and make sure that you get an email associated with your website, whether it be your business name or your DJ name, whatever that may be, make sure it has that specific information in it and don't use universal mail servers that a lot of people use in their personal communication world. Which brings me to my next point, because I just talked about websites. I think having a website is really important. Having all your social media accounts on point and ready to go is super important. And kind of ties back to number one, before you pick a business name, make sure that you can not only get the website with a .com or .music or .info or .tv or .whatever, make sure that you can get the social media accounts as well. I think it's super important. And as soon as you register your business name, make sure you lock in your website, your social media handles on all platforms, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, everything. Make sure that you lock it up right away. If I had to redesign my, my website from the beginning, I think platforms like Squarespace are a great place to start and will keep things in check from an expense perspective. If you hire a designer to build you a website, that can be a never ending endeavor if you're not someone that excels in digital content creation and everything. Squarespace makes it really easy and you can have a clean website that is SEO wrapped with all the tools that they do. Squarespace for your website for the win. I don't even know what number I'm at right now, but I'm gonna finish up this first video and talk about insurance. If you are a DJ that's gonna be operating at events, it is super important that you have liability insurance covering yourself and your business in the event that something doesn't go as planned and if something happens. Having insurance is important. If you're a DJ watching this and you don't have an insurance coverage policy, that takes care of you and your business when you are operating at someone's event, you gotta stop, you gotta find a company and you need to get something locked up right away. At SCE, we use travelers for our total liability insurance as well as workers' comp insurance for our employees. I would recommend travelers to anyone, anywhere. I think they do a great job and they also allow us to use production elements that are not covered under typical DJ insurance policies. If you're not operating with insurance, you need to operate with insurance before you do your next event. Please, please, please do yourself and do me a favor, sign up for an insurance policy and cover your beep. If you liked the content that you heard here in this video or have any questions, I'd like to invite you to thumbs up this video and drop in the comments down below. Make sure you add to the conversation or continue the conversation there. If you have questions about anything that I mentioned or you'd like to see any more of these points dialed in at a granular level with additional content here on the channel, please throw in the comments down below. I'm listening, I'm paying attention, and I'd love to create stuff that will help you in the future. Here is the video I mentioned earlier today about why I think DJs should work for other companies before they get started with their own business and be on the lookout for more content tripping right here on the channel in the days, weeks, and months ahead. Thanks for watching.